Hi, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, latest edition of Math for the Impatient. Today, we're going to talk about two things, cryptographic keys. Um, and we're also going to talk about SGX, which I did not realize actually stands for software card extensions. So one of those random things that mo most people don't know. Um, Stan, I'm going to start out with a really um, you know, important question. Uh, can you tell me why the security of crypto keys is critical for proof of stake networks? Yeah, that's a great question, Marcus. So basically, we have now this new reality. We are moving to the world of proof of stake. And in the past, we had proof of work, we had Bitcoin, we, have, we had Ethereum. Now we have proof of stake. We have Ethereum too. We have Scale, we have Tendermint, Cosmos, some other proof of stake networks. And there's a, there's a fundamental difference between proof of stake networks and proof of work networks. For proof of work, what you need to do, you need to do number crunching. You don't really use much of cryptographic keys if you are a miner. If you're a miner, you buy a graphics card, you buy a particular uh, number crunching device and you crunch the numbers and the security of the network depends on this number crunching. For proof of stake, there's no number crunching. This is great. People don't waste energy. It's much greener. But it comes at an expense. And the expense is, is that for proof of stake networks, the security is based on voting. And when you vote, the voting is using a cryptographic key. So for instance, ETH2, one of the most famous networks nowadays, is using those cryptographic keys. So if you are a validator for ETH2, you have a cryptographic key that you can use to sign messages. Very much the same, the same for us at scale. If you are a scale validator, you're, you're having this cryptographic key and it's really, really, really important to protect those cryptographic keys. Why? Bitcoin was a super successful network in terms of security. If you look at Bitcoin now, you see trillions of dollars actually stored on this network. And you, as you would imagine, hackers probably would want to, to, to hack this network really, really. You know, that would actually be a huge price for someone to be able to hack Bitcoin. But in all those years that Bitcoin existed, it wasn't actually hacked. And it was a pretty big achievement for Satoshi Nakamoto to design this architecture that actually was able to be so much hacker resistant. Now, for proof of stake, security depends on the keys and every validator, every node has a key. And if I am a hacker and I'm able to get enough of those cryptographic keys, I'm going to be able to totally crash and hack the network. So if you have ETH2 and people running all scale and people running the network, and then the hacker comes, steals the keys, guess what? The entire network can be actually compromised in a minute. So all of the money, all of the funds, all of the applications can, could be potentially destroyed. So there's a huge price actually on the security of the cryptographic keys. Now, if you look at uh, how the cryptographic keys are typically stored now, it's not really secure. If you are an ETH2 validator, you download software from the Ethereum Foundation website or from GitHub, download software, you run this software on usually AWS, Amazon Web Services, and then the question becomes, where is the key stored? Well, the key is usually actually stored just on the same machine where you run your validation software. So you buy a machine, a virtual machine from AWS, you install this Ethereum software on this machine, and you store the key on the same machine, which means that pretty much all of the, at least all of the AWS employees, and definitely Jeff Bezos, AWS founder, has access to all of those keys. And then when this system goes, say, out uh, of service, when the hard drive is thrown to, you know, it, you actually, the hard drive will actually contain the key. So keys are actually pretty weak link in the security of proof of stake networks because if the hacker actually steals the keys, then the hacker actually, uh, actually destroys the network. So then uh, the SGX technology comes. And then the question is, how does SGX technology work? If you 
have software and this software uses a cryptographic key. How can you make it in such a way that on one hand, the software can use the key and on the other hand, an attacker cannot actually steal the key. So you have this interesting situation where the key has to be usable, but you shouldn't be able to steal it. And it turns out that there is an idea that allows you to use the key, to keep on using the key, but to prevent people from stealing the key. And this idea can be explained on a very simple example. Let's say, Marcos, that we together decide on a particular encryption algorithm and you becoming my encryptor. So I give you messages and you decrypt messages for me. And then, you know, these become encrypted messages and the security of our network depends on those messages. Let's say what I do, I, I actually tell you to go and sit at a bank in a vault, in a very secure vault, maybe with like metal walls, with machine, people with machine guns protecting you, like super secure. So you'll be securing, sitting in a bank in this, in this secure vault. And then if I want to encrypt something, uh, I will call you and the key will be with you. So I'll call you and tell you, Marcus, please encrypt this message for me. And you won't ever leave the vault. So you'll be sitting in this very secure location. And when I call you and ask you to encrypt the message, you'll encrypt it and, and tell me the encrypted, the encrypted variant of the message. So then the key is in a secure vault. You are in a secure vault. I'm calling you, I'm asking you to encrypt the message. You're encrypting the message for me, but you will never actually give me the actual key. So if you give me the encryption of a particular message, it's not the same as giving the entire key because the key can be used to encrypt any message. So every time I call you, I ask you to encrypt something, you just give me the encrypted message, but the key actually always stays secure. So that's the idea. And this idea is actually used all over the world. One very good example of it is something which is called a smart card. If you have your credit card or your debit card, and there's this tiny, tiny metal chip on the card, actually the key is in a secure vault inside the chip, but the chip will never give out the key to you. The key chip will only do signing or verifying or encryption or decryption, different cryptographic operations, but the key will never go out. So the entire smart card industry, the entire credit card industry is based on this very interesting idea of, of putting a secure key in a secure location and then doing computation inside of the secure location, but never letting the key out. That's pretty much the, the general idea. Very now, cool. Intel, a couple of years ago, implemented something which is called an SGX, which is exactly like this. It is actually a secure technology, a secure compartment inside of an Intel CPU where you can store keys. And so what we do at scale, we're actually using this technology. So we're putting all of, all of our scale keys into the secure compartment, into the secure vault inside Intel CPU. And the keys never leave this compartment. If we want to sign a message, or verify a message, encrypt, decrypt, we're telling the Intel SGX technology to do it. But the, the technology will never allow the actual key to go in outside of the secure Intel protected part on chip physically, which is physically secure on the chip. You can almost view this compartment as a bank, a security vault with metal walls. It's literally like this. In fact, there are actually some metal protections on the chip that actually protect the secure part of the chip. And the funny thing is that from approximately 2017, Intel has been putting this secure compartment pretty much in chip. So you, on your laptop, if you have an Intel laptop, you have the SGS technology, and we're actually thinking all oh, at scale, someone can, could take scale technology and use it to secure, for instance, MetaMask. Our project is open source. We're using SGX for our network, but someone could also use SGX on, on your laptop to, to secure MetaMask by forking software that we designed at scale. So Scale has this really, really interesting thing, which is called SGX server, which does all of this technology in a single place. So if you are a scale validator, your keys will not be stored on the hard drive. Uh, Jeff Bezos or any other AWS employee will never have access to your keys. 
the keys will be always stored on Azure X server and inside of this Intel secure compartment. And there will be literally no way to extract the keys. So even if the hacker hacks into AWS or hacks into a scale node running on AWS, the hacker will not be able to extract the key because the key is actually stored inside, inside SJX. So that's really cool technology. And the reason why the technology is so super important for us is because as I explained, security of keys is critical. And by securing this key in, the, in, the, in this way, we can sleep during the night and not get too worried that some hacker actually, you know, hacks our node and extract the keys. And our actually project is open, it's open source. So we hope that some other projects that are interested to provide stronger security for their keys, in particular ATH2, they can take a look at our, at our source code, maybe fork it and use it to secure their keys. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I think that's it for today. So if you guys want to um, see any of this, you can uh, go to our GitHub repository. And um, we definitely encourage you to do that. Also go to Discord. And of course, our website is scale.network. Thanks very much. Fantastic.